All right, guys. So today I want to talk about Dolce et Decorum Est, Wilfred Owen's famous World War II poem. Now, in order to do that, I can't use Screencast-O-Matic. For some reason, it is being wonky, so I'm going to have to um, not have the poem up, but I will still read it, and hopefully it will work out just fine. Let me go back. Yep. All right, cool. So we'll just go like that. So I will read the poem first. Wilfred Owen, Dolce et Decorum Est. Now, a few things about Wilfred Owen. He was killed very young. He was in World War I. He was a British soldier, and he's widely recognized as World War I's most famous poet. His poem, Dolce et Decorum Est, is one of the classic war literatures in American English. Or I'm sorry, in the English language, not just the American English. In the English language. And it's important to think about this poem when we think about other lore, war literature, such as Dan O'Brien's The Things They Carried. All right? See how they compare and contrast. So please read along. I wish I could have the poem up while I was reading, but I can't. So please read along. Dolce et decorum s. Bent double like old beggars under sacks, knock need, coughing like hags, we curse through sludge. Till on the haunting flares we turned our backs, and towards our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched asleep, many had lost their boots, but limped on, bloodshod. All went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of gas shells dropping softly behind. Gas, gas, quick boys, an ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still was yelling out and stumbling, and floundering like a man in fire or lime. Dim through the misty panes and thick green light, as under a green sea I saw him drowning. In all my dreams before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. If in some smothering dreams you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face like a devil sick of sin. If you could hear it every jolt, the blood come gargling from the froth corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cud of vile, incurable sores on innocent tongues. My friend, you would not tell with such high zest, children ardent for some desperate glory. The old lie, dolce et decorum est, pro patria mori. Nice, huh? All right, so it's important to, to first know what Dolce et Decorum Est is. It loosely translates to, it is sweet and honorable to die for one's country, or to sweet and noble, some variant like that. All right? This is a poem that is trying to dispel the old patriotic notion that it is noble to die for one's country. Now, let me draw the distinction. I'm not saying it is not noble to die for one's country. But what Owen is trying to argue here is warfare in World War I with the beginning of World War I is not this romantic thing. It is deadly. Um, trench warfare is terrible. In trench warfare, the idea of a romantic death, of a death that is glorious, and like you see in movies, you know, when or in, uh, in medieval combat or in civil war combat, men dying heroically, it doesn't happen. In trench warfare, or in World War I, where there's mustard gas and machine guns. And Wilfred Owen is trying to capture this, the sense that, you know, whereas on it might have been noble and glorious, it is no longer noble and glorious because warfare has become so deadly and charged and um, and destructive. And he, and he brings up this destructive imagery throughout the poem. He talks about Look, look at some of the images. Bent double like old beggars under sacks. Knock me, coughing like hags. They've been gassed. Um, this is not a pleasant scene of battle. This is not a chivalrous scene of battle. This is a, a war of carnage and destruction. In the second stanza, we do see the gas, gas, quick boys. And it's important here, if you're reading, uh, it is a loose rhyme scheme. Although... It, and, and most nearly it is uh, complete rhymes, but sometimes they're slant rhymes. They're rhymes that are inexact. It hints at this, you know, dislocation, this disjointedness. 
To children ardent for some desperate glory, the old lie, dulce et decorum est, pro patria mori. If you had saw us, you would not tell children that old lie. It is noble and honorable, or it is sweet and honorable to die for one's country. Um, as you are reading this poem, I do want you to think of Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carried. How is war depicted in The Things They Carried? Well, think about Ted Lavender. Remember when Kia would just says, boom, down, that's it. We get the same kind of vibe in this poem, that war is not this romantic notion. It is often without meaning. It can be meaningless. People can just die. Uh, and sometimes they die gruesome deaths. People are afraid. We get the speaker's struggle much in the same way that we get Lieutenant Cross's struggle in the things they carried. This poem and that short story are both about the heroes and struggles of warfare. How do we write about war when war is so deadly and so destructive? Is it honorable and sweet to die for one's country? Perhaps. But I think it's safe to say that the romantic notions of warfare are things of the past. Um, again, sorry about the screencast-o-matic. I don't know why it wouldn't show, but hopefully I will get that back up. All right, thanks. <laughs>